Hello everyone, I am Rajesh Sen Gupta. Our topic is stone and that is memorials, architectural remnants and objects. Now in this module or in this week, we will be talking about stone as a material and how that has different kind of its uh, you know, it manifestation, not only through the time period, but also through different kind of purposes, different kind of context and so on. And that is the reason instead of like I mean uh, focusing on a particular um, era or a focusing on a particular region, in this week what we will do is we will look into a diverse range of objects uh, predominantly made of stone. So, this is uh, in, in some ways we can say that I mean the structure of this week is very different, uh, not, not completely different, but I mean uh, uh, significantly different from the other weeks that we studied and uh, even though our uh, focus remains on this one particular material, but uh, in itself is a kind of a course one can imagine that the entire which can be expanded into an entire um, course in itself. So, uh, what we can see here in terms of that stone and uh, one, can, one can ask this question that I mean why stone? Why stone is chosen as one of this uh, materials here, which will be discussed in this length? So, uh, of course, I mean that can be said with uh, many different kind of materials. So, stone here is not just that. I mean, this is very ex uh, this is an exclusive material that I mean all this things that, that this diverse range of its use, its significance and uh, of course that I mean how this has been incorporated in the community lives in, in the Indian subcontinent is not something that is exclusive and uh, it is not that like wood or textile or any other kind of things like the metals and stuff, they are not uh, you know they do not serve the same purpose. So, stone here the entire discussion this week will just be a kind of structure for uh, all of you to explore it further to see that I mean what all material you can think of which also has this kind of functions such as stone. Now, to start with this, this is also something that I mean I wanted to have in mind that to uh, when, when we look into uh, art history, when we look into the history of Indian art and as I have mentioned that in the first uh, week, in the first lecture as well, that how there are uh, the, the predominant ways of looking into Indian art are mostly a uh, time bound that I mean we look into the, the time periods, the temporality and then of course that I mean how particular regions or particular dynasties are very important uh, as part of the way uh, history is constructed. Now, since we are looking into a slightly different uh, mode of uh, you know uh, perceiving history and that is that is through the materials and that is the reason uh, what I thought will be interesting is to see that I mean how differently a lot of these objects which are related to stone have been part of um, you know the culture in the Indian subcontinent for last uh, 3000 years or so. Now, uh, another thing is that I mean this is also uh, it is a deliberate way to sort of uh, make the boundary between something that is understood as past and something that is understood as present to make this boundary slightly blur. So, that we can think about a number of uh, stone objects and not just only stone, but I mean the different kind of objects and how they can also be relevant not only in the history, but also in our contemporary lives to understand the history through contemporary lens and to that is the reason why it is also important for us is to look at a number of the stone tools, different kind of uses of stone and go back and forth in time. And that is also the reason why I have arranged this material in the way um, you know uh, starting with the stone tools and then slowly getting into more and more details about uh, different modes of carving stone and using them.
So as you can see that I mean here we have this one a very simple this stone tool here which looks kind of triangular and this is a stone tool that comes from Paleolithic time period and it was found from Nellore near uh, Madras or Chennai. So in the archaeological records it says Madras and that is the thing that I have also uh, stick to but I mean as we all know that I mean Madras is today called Chennai. So this was found from Nellore and if you can see that I mean this is a prehistoric stone tool. So this is not an object in itself. I mean of course it is an object in itself but this is a tool which is used for making an object perhaps or shaping certain things. So what are the characteristics of a tool that we can find here? So there is a uh, I mean of course one can see that I mean this stone tool this has been shaped in such a way that the surface of it has become almost smooth and then this this linear line that we see and it is sort of like I mean there is no breakage, there is no abrupt surface. So, everything is uh, you know smoothened in that sense and then like I mean the tip of the stone tool that we find that I mean it is somewhat rounded and it is not sharp. And then at the end like I mean uh, here in the bottom then we see that there is a slight groove that was made here in this particular area slightly slanted and that is how one can imagine that I mean perhaps this has been used for someone to hold it in their hand and then make use of it. So since we do not really see sharp edges in this tool uh, either in this sides or you know on the top. So, one can imagine that this was not used for uh, to cut anything, but perhaps it was used for like smoothening things or to like I mean you know break another surface and uh, things like that. So, uh, that way these are the ways in which we can think about that I mean how the shape of it, the surface texture of it and then um, the smoothness, the roughness and then all the grooves and all the slant in that object all of them how they tell a story about the its use and its relevance. And so this is one thing one can see that how um, in, the, in the prehistoric time and uh, since we are talking about a time that the prehistoric time and perhaps this comes from Paleolithic period and at a time when metal the technologies for incorporating metal in, in the daily life um, practices was not really widespread or perhaps it was not known. So one can imagine for many different kind of things where metal is used for hammering, for breaking things as well as for cutting and everything else. So stone must have been used and that is the reason one can see that I mean stone being this uh, you know heavy mass and how that can be incorporated for doing the purposes which, which later on were, were served by the metal objects. We are continuing our discussion on the stone tools and we have two prehistoric stone tools on this slide. So here one can see that how differently the stone tools are made and the first one that we have already discussed in slide 1 and here we can see that that is being contrasted with another stone tool. So in the right side of the screen we have a stone tool, a prehistoric stone tool and that is from Dhon in the Kunul district of Andhra Pradesh. So which is not very far from the other stone tool from where uh, you know and that, that one is found from Nellore again southern Andhra Pradesh. So uh, this is something that I mean this, these two areas are uh, you know in, in close proximity and what we can see here is how differently these stone tools are made. So once we do the comparison the, the characteristic features and everything they become much more uh, you know um, prominent. So, in the stone tool that we have in the right side of the screen, we see this being some, somewhat abrupt. So, it does not really follow a uniform uh, shape like the one that is there in the left, left side. And then also we can see that there are many of these ups and downs, those are there in the body of this stone tool and those are still there, very much there. So, it is not really, there is not really any conscious effort of smoothening it up like the way we see this in the left side and also the seeing the edges one can imagine that I mean the way this, this stone tool in the left side of the screen the edges have been smoothened very carefully so that there is no abrupt 
uh, you know edges or anything else or any any abrupt projection or groove within it so this has been done very carefully whereas here one can see that the edges i mean in the right side of the image we see the edges as uh, you know that all all the different ups and downs and some cases one can see that i mean the edges are also sharp so those things have been kept here and one can imagine that i mean these things were there for a conscious reason because if a smoothened, uh, smoothened surface of this stone, I mean the one we have in the left side that serves a particular kind of purpose either for like you know pressing something or, or also like I mean it might have been used for smoothening another surface for which reason that needed an even surface of this tool. So if this is the kind of purpose it has served, so the one we have in the right side of the screen must have served a very different kind of purpose. So, all these abrupt edges in this and the sharp edges as well that, that suggests that I mean it must have been used for cutting something or, or breaking something. So, for that reason it required that kind of angular and, and sharp edges which is not present in the one in the left side of the screen and, and so this is the kind of like an, and both of them are portable they can be hold in the hands right. So, if this is the kind of characteristic features that we see in both the stone tools, so that makes us think about how um, you know the, the, the skill had also developed in the prehistoric time period and it is not really like one person knew how to do the smoothening and another person did not know how to do the smoothening, but it says something about how the, pre, the people in the prehistoric times in, in the Indian subcontinent and of course, we are talking about the southern part of the Indian subcontinent, how they have uh, realized and how they have understood the, um, the material characteristics of stone and how differently a smooth surface and a rough surface can actually serve some different purposes. So, those are the things, the understanding of the material, understanding of how that can be used for solving problems. For, for daily life, for, for something else. So, those things led to this kind of material explorations, those things led to making this kind of tools and in extension of that making objects. So, for all these things one can imagine that this kind of tool making practice, utilization of tools or stone, whatever those required a high degree of sensibility towards the material themselves and that is also something that we are also trying to do here to understand stone from a very um, you know from from a close proximity so that uh, one one can uh, understand its possibilities one can see that i mean in, in what all different context one can explore this so, from there I wanted to also show some of the stone tools which are used in 20th century in the 19th century. So, we were looking into the tools which were there in the prehistoric times and as I have said earlier that the prehistoric practices or the early historic practices, not all the time that those practices are completely uh, away from what we are doing right now. And these are some of the examples. So, for example, here we have this particular stone tool called Nung and this is a stone tool which is used during pottery making in Manipur in the 20th century. So, this is the Nung, this is this tool which is there in the left side of the screen and one can see this is an oval shaped stone which is again very smooth in its surface and oval almost like an egg. So, this is this is something that one can imagine that it can be held in hand and then if it is used during pottery making then one can imagine that this kind of stones are used for flattening the uh, you know the, the surface of the pot or slowly beating it like I mean for pottery there are different ways in which the pots and um, the uh, objects the utilitarian objects are produced and in this ones we find that beating of the pots and also like I mean smoothening it, flattening the clay to make it like I mean the flat slabs of clay, those are also very much uh, important part of pottery making. So, this, this kind of 
tool which does not really have any abrupt edge and it has a broad surface with which one can like you know beat it on the clay surface or like I mean you know press it. So those those kind of things one can see that I mean how the stone tools are used for uh, attaining those kind of purposes. So the basic characteristic as we have already discussed in the earlier slide that basic characteristic of this kind of tools which are made of stone so that is that the, the smoothness, the roughness and then also like whether it is angular, whether this is you know it has a curvilinear uh, edge or like I mean you know how, how big this is, what kind of surface it has. So all these different kind of things one can see that how they tell us about their uses and some of the things we have seen that how those stone tools were used during the prehistoric times and this this 20th century example from Manipur this Nung stone this this also says something that some of the practices of using stone which existed in such a long time back has not been disappeared from the um, from the culture so there 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 are those continued use of stone tools and stone for this kind of purposes of treating another material or smoothening it or making it uh, ready for, for turning them into some utilitarian object or other objects of daily use. Now the other example that we have in the same slide and that is it is a wrestling meal. So this wrestling meal is a uh, you know it, it is something that is that that utilizes the way of the stone. So the stone being this uh, you know this this heavy material which is which uh, you know uh, which one can one can see that I mean how that can be useful for uh, you know uh, the the activities which which require high degree of uh, physical um, involvement. So wrestling something like that I mean where, where like I mean training our physique is very much part of its 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 uh, you know its overall practice. So there use of this stone as a wrestling meal is something one can imagine that why um, you know stone was chosen as the desired object for uh, this, this serving this particular purpose. So this is a wrestling meal which is made of sandstone and it is also found from Andhra Pradesh and uh, around 1850. So one can imagine this is this was made uh, or like this was used in the mid 19th century and um, you know and what we see here here is this continuous use of stone and it is also something that I mean this is used for wrestling purpose this is not used for something that we see on the daily basis. So for, for uh, using such kind of tools on, on the daily purpose it might not be the most convenient thing because of its high heavy weight but for wrestling a heavy weight object is very much required and that is the reason perhaps stone serves or stone fits the purpose very well. And here also in terms of its making one can see that how the its circular shape has been made and then all the surfaces that has been there that had been uh, you know it has been smoothened so that there are no abrupt edges, there are no sharp angles or edges that, that can hurt anyone who is holding it and for holding it perhaps in the middle there is this uh, you know the, this this circular shape this circular shape with the with the hollow center with this one um, you know this this one particular band that is running between these two uh, parts is something is is made in this particular way so that perhaps one can hold it or like I mean you know that that can be utilized for a grip. So this these are some of the reasons in which we find that how stone is uh, the, the materiality of the stone is utilized and depending on its shape, its form then one can also think about that what all purposes it might have served. So this, these are the different ways in which we see that not only only during the prehistoric times that even today I mean uh, even in the 20th century and even to some extent we can say it today that how we understand the different kind of uses of stone and that is how some of the purposes that the prehistoric people have served one can still relate to that. I am not saying that I mean all these things are directly uh, relatable but we can think that there are certain kind of resonances one can find in the uh, 
in the practices which which are um, there in the history and the practices that we still continue today. So, from there I wanted to touch upon some of the other uses of stone in another part of the country. So, if we can think about some of the objects that the objects that we have already looked at the tools and then of course, this wrestling meal which is which is an object right. So, if, if these are the things we have already looked at. So, those are the ones which are portable and they, they, they are usually the ones which are used either for daily purposes or for wrestling and so on the specialized kind of training. Now, for for stone we can also see that I mean it is not the only kind of thing that those were used from the very early times. And another use of stone a very prominent use of stone that we find in the history of the Indian subcontinent is the use uh, of stone for making burials. And uh, we have touched upon the South Indian burials in the in the week on the Harappan sites, the Indus Valley sites, and we have spoken about the burial practices. And here are some more examples that how the burial sites, the megalithic burials in the southern India, they have uh, utilized stone in different ways. So the examples that we have on screen are from Kerala, and there are two different kind of um, you know uh, burial sites that we see here. And so, these burial sites we, we find them from like 1000 BC to 500 BC or to 500 AD. So, between like I mean this long time period for around 1500 years or so between these times we find this burial practices have uh, you know sustained and, and they were carried forward. And uh, that is that is also something we can see that I mean even today in certain Hindu communities in southern India they still practice burial rituals and uh, in, in their death rituals the bodies are not cremated but buried. So, one can see that I mean how there are the continuation of this kind of practices and uh, again like I mean when, when there is a burial there needs to be the use of some kind of plaque or some kind of marker which, which pays homage to the deceased person and that is how we find that some kind of permanent material is used in this purpose there. And and one can think about like I mean what all permanent material we have in our surrounding. And in southern India uh, we, we find that I mean in, in a number of these sites the local stones were made use of. And stones are used for their durability at the same time that I mean how they remain almost unchanged over the time. Right. So, this is this is something we find in the left side of the screen we have something called pathical and pathical is this this particular kind of this burial uh, where, where we find that there are this uh, pieces of rectangular pieces of stone and where the, the, the upper edge of the stone is smoothened slightly made into this half circular shape and in shape. And so, this pathical basically means a hood of a snake and so, one can imagine that I mean the way this these stones are arranged they almost sort of like I mean are arranged in a way in which they are providing shelter to the tomb which lies within it. So, this is how one can see that how the shape of it and its resemblance to the natural um, you know the elements or like the natural beings that had inspired the terminology of it. So, and as we have already discussed that in this burial site what happens is that there are burials uh, underground and then on the top of that there are the stones which are placed in different ways like for example, here we see this particular fashion in which the stones are arranged that is particle in which this snake hood kind of this uh, you know this ambience that is created. And then we also see that main head like form like where we have this long pieces of monolithic stone which are just placed there. There are dolmen like forms and uh, if you remember that I mean we have already looked into some of the forms in the Chengalpettu district of uh, Tamil Nadu in which we have those those huge blocks of stone which are placed on the top of this burial as a sign of showing respect to the deceased ones. 
So, here we see the local uh, this this laterite stone is used for um, you know ma making this making this particle or, or the or the burial stones or this memorial stones. So, uh, laterite is something that we find in abundance in that, that part of the country in the Malabar region and in Kerala and in the western Ghats. So, there is another thing that we can see that how this, this porous rock surface from off laterite the, and then this uneven rock surface with this, this particular this distinctive uh, uh, you know reddish tone that, that it has. So, all these things add to the regional specificity and that, that says something about the site from where the stones are collected and where this, this particular memorials are erected. So, all these things also add to the distinctive flavor and the distinctive cultural uh, trait of, of this, this, this region. So, and the other thing that, that we have here, the other example and this, this one is called Kudakkal and Kudakkal is another kind of um, you know burial and again that, that comes from Kerala and uh, as I have already mentioned the time period it will probably be somewhere between 1000 uh, BC to like I mean 500 um, uh, AD. So, between this times there were this widespread practices of uh, making these burials, this this memorials. So here, what we have there is this kudakkal, which is which is basically it's an umbrella form. So what one can see that I mean there is this block of stone here, and then on the top of that there is this very carefully placed umbrella-like form, and that that sort of like I mean shows its um, you know uh, that sort of like I mean is is placed here in one hand it sort of like I mean shows uh, reverence towards the deceased one for for uh, as we know that I mean how umbrella is something that is that is related to the royalty and and uh, you know or like I mean you know we only put umbrella on the top of the people uh, whom we show respect or reverence. So, that is that is this this particular practice from our daily lives that that has been then transformed into the form of stone here and to make this stone umbrella and then putting it on the top of this um, you know on the on the top of this vertical stone so that i mean it remains uh, uh, you know it remains uh, immovable and, and and stable so that i mean this this site where the the deceased person is buried should not be uh, you know uh, disturbed so, so these are these are some of the ways in which we find that I mean how the weight of the stone, and then um, of course that um, you know the the locally available material, all these things they make a huge deal of impact on the kind of objects and the kind of sites they create, and how their relevance in the society are constructed. Thank you.